Uh, we all love you, Kivul. Harry. Harry Kivul. Harry. Harry Kivul. Harry. Harry Kivul. I love you, Harry Kewell. Harry, Harry Kewell. Yeah, look at the whole video. They love him. Socceroos and Galatasaray midfielder Harry Kewell, who's endured a mixed start to his time in Turkey with the country's biggest club. And earlier this week, he played a full game in the UEFA Cup draw with Hamburg and Germany and also took time out to catch up with Matthew Hall in Istanbul. What's it like to be in a place like Istanbul and, and have fans? I think uh, the first time I was told about that Galatasaray was interested when my agent uh, told me that they were interested. My first uh, initial reaction was, oh, okay, you know. It kind of really just went in and straight out my mind. But then when I got to learn more about it, the way they... Uh, they do things, uh, the way they approach people, how nice they were. And when I first come out here, I think uh, it all summed it up that it was time for me to leave England and, and come here and be introduced into the uh, Turkish league. What's the, the, the main differences for you between playing in the English Premier League and playing in the Turkish Super League? I think personally, the league's quite good here. It's uh, maybe not as uh, technical, uh, I mean, all our players at Galatasaray are very technical where I think any one of them could easily make a premiership team. Uh, the league itself is very fast, very furious. Uh, all, the, all, the af uh, all the athletes here are very strong and very quick. Uh, not much different to the English Premier League, but again, it's not got a higher rating as the English Premier League because obviously Premier League has got some, well, the world's best player there at the moment and it's got some of the up and coming world best players there as well. Tell us about Galatasaray as a club and what it means in Istanbul and Turkey. It's one of the top four clubs. It's always fighting for the championship. You ask that to a Galatasaray fan and they would, they would shoot you down if you said top four clubs. There's only one club for them in uh, Turkey and you know it's, it's fantastic to be a part of it. There is a lot, a lot of pressure on every, every player here. They do not concede to second. You know, if you come second, you might as well come last, you might as well get relegated. First is the only place, and even, even when you do come first, it's like expected. So there is a lot of pressure on us. Uh, obviously, we've had an up and down season this year, but again, we're, we're fighting. You know, we've got to get back to basics and we're, we're fighting and, you know, we've got a little bit of a run together now, so hopefully long may continue. Do you enjoy that pressure, that extra pressure? Yeah, it's, it's great, you know, it's not good for the hair because I can, you know, see a few grey bits and that. But again, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. You know, I think you need that in, in football. I think when the pressure is not there, you kind of slip into an easy mode and you kind of drift and, you know, you, you start getting sloppy. You know, you, you get into positions where you have to win, you have to keep pushing yourself, forcing yourself to make these good passes. And, you know, if you do make a mistake, you've got to get back. And I think it's good for the game. This season, the coach who signed you Mikhail Skibber was sacked recently. Does that make things more interesting for you as, as, as a player? <laughs> uh, well, you, you never like to see uh, a trainer get sacked because at the end of the day, you know, it's the player's fault. You know, I take it on a personal note that the reason why he is sacked is because of we weren't performing to our best of our abilities. Uh, but again, that's football. You know, people demand results and, you know, if it's not working, you've got to change the system. and. Now we've got a, a new trainer in there now and he's, he's cracking the whip and we're all fighting again to, to be in his start in 11 and I think that's good. Bulent Korkmaz, the new trainer, is a club legend. He was a legend with the team as a player, won the UEFA Cup in 2000. Don't know, no. They like to tell, tell us that. What does that mean for the club? Is it good to have a guy like him at this time? Well, again, he's... Uh, he knows the ins and outs of the uh, Turkish league. He knows virtually every single player in Turkey. 
He knows how to win a European Games. He knows how to win the Cup, especially the UEFA Cup. So I think it's important to have someone aboard like that. And again, uh, he's been here now a couple of weeks and every training session, every single player is on their toes. He does not let one, one thing slide, which is good. You know, you, you, you like to see that. You like to see everyone training hard, working hard. And, you know, he's turned around and said that if everyone is working hard, it's fantastic for the team. You wave a cup against Bordeaux. You came back from injury and scored a cracking goal that someone we spoke to outside the stadium described as a goal you wait all your life for. <laughs> was it great to have that sort of result? Yeah, it was. It was uh, we worked very hard that game. Uh, we, we got a good result over there in the law. Uh, we, we worked very hard. We had a, had a chance over there to... Uh, good chance over there. Keep it done a good save. And so it wasn't that I wanted to get back and score a goal or anything like that. But again, you just get in positions and you just try to do the best thing for the team. But again, I thought four of our goals were all special. You know, not just my one, not just somebody's one, but even Ardida's two were... The build-up to it was fantastic. The way we worked as a team to get the ball into those positions was fantastic. Can Galatasaray win the UEFA Cup? I've never been one to predict anything like that. I always let the, the trainer or the manager discuss that kind of information. I just concentrate on the games. Looking towards the Socceroos, what did you think of uh, Australia v Japan, nil-nil, away from home? I was lucky it was showing over here. Uh, I ended up watching it just back at my uh, apartment. Uh, the boys did well. You know, it was always going to be a difficult game. The turnaround, you know, majority of the boys played Saturday, even a few played Sunday. So the time they got out there, they only had a chance really to have a sleep and then they were going to play. So to get the draw out there, which I think everyone wanted anyway, if we could have nicked a goal, would have been too good to be true. But we didn't, but we got a good result out there. And now we can look forward to the Uzbekistan game. Verbeek has some uh, almost radical ideas. Uh, I've called him a radical conservative in that he'll do pull something out of the hat, like play with no recognised strikers or put Tim Kale up front as a as a lone striker. Is that the way that coaching is going forward? Do you think? Again, you got to you got to think. Tim was you know the last three or four games for Everton was playing up front uh, because uh, it wasn't if Tim had just banged decided to go, you know, I'm going to be a striker, you know, the, the trainers turned around and said, well, I'll play him up front now, he hasn't played there. Tim had played the last three or four games for his own club up the, uh, up the middle, so up, up front. So no, I think it was, it was a perfect, uh, perfect tactical move, you know. Again, I watched the game again, he worked hard, he was making himself nuisance up there and that, so that's, that's what Tim wanted. The game against Uzbekistan is one more step closer to South Africa. How much of a difference has it been to have a campaign this time rather than be considering a sudden death playoff somewhere it's, in South it's, America? I have to say for me, perfect. This way where we can play a load more games and we can play good, but then when we do play bad, we, and if we lost, we still got a chance to make it up the next, the next game like everyone else has. And no penalty shootouts. No penalty shootouts. So well, again, I think we're, <laughs> we're... Again, penalties can go either way, you know. If uh, you have a great keeper, like we've got one uh, with Swartzer, you know, he helps us majority of the time. You know, uh, we just got to stick it in the back of the net. Harry Easier Kuhl, said than done. Harry Kuhl in Istanbul, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing Harry in the Socceroos shirt again on April 1 against Uzbekistan and wish him all the best tonight when fifth place Galatasaray take on third place Trabzonspor.